Today we're talking about moleskin. 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 This looks thin. Is it even watercolour paper? Hello, my dear paint monsters. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. I'm Aga of Hungry for Paint. I'm a paint maker. I make watercolours, especially unusual granulating ones, and I make videos here on YouTube uh, recently, especially about paper, watercolour paper. And today I want to show you this sketchbook. This is the Moleskin watercolour sketchbook. It's very popular. Is it good? Shall we find out? We shall. But before I get any further, 17th of November, alongside a new watercolour set, I will also be launching mystery watercolour grab bags in my shop. They contain various colours from past sets that I made. They're surprise bags, so you don't know which colours exactly you're gonna get. They're more affordable than if you bought regular sets, so it's a perfect way to try Hungry for Paint watercolours if you still haven't had a chance, or maybe you get some for an art friend. Grab bags will not be coming back for at least a year, so don't miss out. Back to Moleskin. By the way, if you ever wondered how to pronounce the name, uh, you're not the only one. I tried to Google the answer before making this video, and apparently, however you've been saying it, you've been right. Moleskin themselves say that there's no correct pronunciation as while being an Italian-based company, Moleskin is a brand with undefined national identity. End of quote. So you can call them Moleskin, 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 whatever you want. All right, so I've got these two sketchbooks here. Uh, I bought the big one a good few years ago now. It was one of my first sketchbooks, but luckily I left a couple pages black so we can run some tests today. I've mainly been using it with watercolors as they are my medium of choice. Uh, I've also got this smaller one, which I was gifted uh, by a friend more recently, and I've been using this one as well. Let's have a look at some details. Uh, this is called Moleskin Art Watercolor Album. Uh, it's hardcover. The size is A4, which is 8.25 inches by 11.75 uh, inches. It's got 30 sheets or 60 pages of paper, and it currently costs on Amazon 27 US dollars. This one. Uh, the small one is also Moleskin Art Watercolor Album uh, in hardcover. The size is pocket. Uh, it's 9 by 14 centimeters, which translates to 3.5 inches by 5.5 inches. Uh, in both of them, the paper is cellulose 200 GSM, so it's not very thick. And the small one currently costs 15. USD. It's also got 30 sheets or 60 pages of watercolour paper. Now let's have a look inside. The paper has a nice cold press surface. This is what it looks like. The surface is the same on both sides of the paper. I don't really see a difference and you can use both sides. I really like the cover on this one. It's hard, it's very sturdy. I've had this sketchbook for like four years now. It went on holidays with me. I carried it with me in my backpack. There's practically no signs of wear. And the elastic still works great. It didn't get loose at all. It's just as it was when I got this one. The sketchbook has a convenient paper pocket here at the end where you can store loose artwork or any kind of papers really. Another thing I really like about this sketchbook is that it opens absolutely flat so it's really easy to uh, draw and paint whether you're left-handed or right-handed. This is convenient. I'm happy to report that this paper works very good with erasers. You can erase uh, to your heart's content as long as you're not extremely heavy-handed and you're not going to damage the surface of the paper. So that's a nice change from the previous sketchbook I reviewed, uh, the Arteza one. That was absolutely terrible. Uh, you couldn't erase anything at all or you'd damage the paper immediately. But this is not the case with Moleskin. 
you can sketch, you can erase, it works fine. Also, I haven't had any problems with this paper using washi tape, uh, masking tape. So if you like using that, that's gonna work. You're going to see in the testing part of this video. All right, but how does this paper work with watercolors? Is it good for watercolor? Well, <laughs> do you want the short answer or the long answer? Uh, the short answer is it's not that great. Uh, the long answer is it is hard to get really flat washes because the paper dries relatively quickly and not evenly, as is the case with most cellulose papers. So if you look here or here, you'll see what I mean. It is true that I was a lot less skilled with watercolors when I was using this sketchbook than I am now. I learned quite a few tricks and quite a few techniques to make it easier to work even with slightly more difficult paper. But basically this paper won't work for you. If you want a flat wash, uh, you're going to have to work at it yourself. The paper buckles when you paint, so uh, pools of water, pools of paint uh, might occur and you really need to control the amount of water that you use if you want to avoid unintentional backgrounds, well, the cauliflower effect that you can see here. Obviously, the more skilled you are, the easier it's going to be. But this is something you need to know how to avoid and you kind of have to put some kind of effort into it. Also, it's easy to pick up previous layers when painting on top of them. So it also means it's easy to overwork a place uh, in your artwork if you go over it, well, more than once, basically, in each layer. So yeah, this is definitely not the easiest paper to work with. But having said all that, strangely, I really enjoyed working in the sketchbook. Partly this might be because I was still quite new to working in sketchbooks and everything was exciting and everything was new. And I do remember moments of frustration. And now I know with a little bit more experience under my belt that not all of it was my fault. And some of these frustrations might not have been there had I been using different paper. So objectively speaking, this paper is not great for watercolors. Would I recommend this paper to a watercolor beginner? Definitely not. It is very good for gouache though. I have absolutely no complaints here. For gouache it's really nice. Here's a couple pieces I did from this book. This is a very nice book by the way. I can recommend it. Uh, I'm probably going to make a video about it. It basically teaches you to paint uh, in gouache. So yeah, if you want to use colored pencils along with watercolor, this works as well. This, this surface I think is quite good for colored pencils, although I don't work too much with them, but I think this works. And the paper is very good with ink. It's smooth enough uh, so that the nib won't get stuck. If you use a nib pen, you can use fine liners as well. If I use fine liners, I mainly use the Sakura Pigma Micron pens. They're very nice and they're waterproof once they are dry. I have very little experience painting with ink, but the texture shows up really nice on this paper. And I left this one unfinished on purpose because I wanted to show you how intentional and careful you have to be with how much water you use with your watercolor when you're working in the sketchbook. As you can see here, I wasn't really very careful and it shows immediately. There's a ton of backgrounds and cauliflowers and whatnot just because I used too much water in the consequent layers. So yeah, that's what it looks like when you don't pay attention or you don't know what you're doing, or both. And here's a fantastic example of overworking a spot. This paper is just not very forgiving. I didn't notice any difference between the paper in the big sketchbook and in the pocket size one. The paper feels exactly the same to me. All right, let's test a bunch of things. I'm doing the washes with French Ultramarine uh, and Phthalo Blue Green Shade, both from Daniel Smith. I want a granulating color and a smooth, non-granulating color. 
uh, so you can compare the results. I wanted to do lighter washes this time. I didn't want to overwork them. I wanted to give you an impression of what it looks like. If you just try to do a quick, simple wash, then I want to show you how two colors blend uh, and mix pretty much on their own on the paper. So I wanted to show you what watercolors can do on their own on this paper. And then the layering test so you can see how well you can glaze, how well you can put layers on top of each other. So I use the same watercolors, the same pigments, the same brand uh, for all of my testing in my sketchbooks because I want to get consistent results that you can compare. As to the blending, you can see that the edges where the different colors meet are quite sharp. Which is to be expected as this is cellulose paper, this is wood pulp paper, so the colors are not going to blend so smoothly. The lifting part went well. As you can see, I was able to lift quite a lot of the ultramarine. This is satisfactory in my opinion. I was even able to lift a little bit of the phthalo, so that's nice as phthalo blue is a hell of a pigment to work with. It's really staining and hard to lift in general. I'm happy to report this paper works well with uh, washi tape, with masking tape. As you can see, it comes off very nicely and very cleanly. So it's not so visible with French Ultramarine, uh, but with the phthalo blue, you can see very clearly how easy it is to create uh, the cauliflower effect, back runs, paint running back on the paper. So in this particular sketchbook, it's really hard to get a simple flat wash and you need to be very intentional about it. Otherwise you will create these marks. Years ago when I started working with it, when I was quite inexperienced uh, with watercolor and then I thought it was entirely my fault, but now I can see that this paper really encourages blooming. Let me show you a little comparison with two sketchbooks uh, that I reviewed previously. And both of these sketchbooks this is uh, Arteza watercolor book and this is uh, Global Art Materials Travelogue handbook. And these are both cellulose paper sketchbooks as well, so it's not like uh, the quality of paper is wildly different, mind you. So here's the one by Arteza. And while the blending is nicer, definitely, on the moleskin paper, in the Arteza sketchbook there are practically no blooms. And the same goes for the Global Art Materials sketchbook no blooms. Let's do a little demonstration now. Here's a little speed paint so you can see how this paper performs in action. As you can see I'm using the smaller size, the pocket size, and the watercolors I'm using is my new set that's getting launched on November 17th, Globetrotter England. These are all natural rock pigments straight from Britain. Very soft, understated colors. I think they're going to work really well with this kind of illustration. Both the blooming and pooling are not a huge problem if you're working small scale, like in the pocket version. If you're working A4, large format, you're going to cover larger surfaces and you're likely going to use more water, so then it becomes an even bigger problem. So if you enjoy working large scale, I definitely not recommend this one. By the way, if you used this sketchbook, let me know in the comments. I always love to hear your opinions. Can you use this paper for watercolors? Yes, you can. Can you find better paper at a similar price point? Yes, you definitely can. Will I be purchasing more of these small skin sketchbooks? No, I don't think so. I'm going to move on to sketchbooks with cotton paper soon, including some more affordable options. If you think that's something that might interest you, I would suggest subscribing to my channel so you don't miss these videos. I'm also planning to show you probably the nicest cellulose paper I have ever used. So stay tuned, stick around, hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Make videos here on YouTube. And that's the washing machine. Can you hear that beep? It's beeping really loudly. That's my washing machine. Ah.